Hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, in this video, I want to show you how you can perform a densitometric analysis on uh, a uh, DNA electrophoresis gel using image J. Uh, first of all, a brief introduction on what I have on this image right here, just so you, so you know what I'm talking about. So in this image, I have a control band, as you can see, and um, these samples right here. These samples basically represent a particular concentration of a uh, particular compound that I put into the PCR reaction just to see how, uh, how this compound affects amplification. These uh, are duplicates. I should have done this in triplicate, but yeah, for this video's sake, I think this, this, is, an, this is enough. So what I'm trying to do uh, right now is basically quantify the DNA concentration in this, uh, these samples right here um, relative to the control. You can use this uh, even uh, to uh, um, basically, I don't know, quantify a particular gene expression as long as you have a housekeeping gene to normalize to. And uh, this ImageJ software could basically do what a qPCR does, sort of. So uh, yeah, without a qPCR, you could perform something similar. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Now, first of all, you will need, of course, the ImageJ software installed. Then we'll go to File, uh, File, Open, and I'll open my image right here. Next, I would want to um, convert this to 8 bits. The next thing I'm going to do is just subtract the background so we get a clear image. What I'm going to do is select the rectangle tool, select a portion of it. I'm going to go to set measurements. I'm going to select mean gray value. Then I am going to analyze, measure, and I'm going to remember this number right here, 58.231. Uh, next. I'm going to deselect this from the image because I want to subtract the background from the general image. And I'm going to do by um, process, math, subtract, and I'm going to subtract right here, 58.231. And this is the subtracted background from, uh, from right here. But I will also, uh, what I also can do is just go to uh, edit and uh, maybe invert the image. Okay, so um, now we have the, the image processed in this way. What I would basically go, uh, need to do right now is select the rectangle tool from here and encompass all of my lanes of interest right here. This image should be as um, straight horizontally as possible. Okay, now then I'm going to go to Analyze, um, um, Gels, select first lane. After that, Analyze, Gel, Plot Lanes. As you can see, it gave me some peaks right here that I can work with. Let me just put this image a bit right here. Then I'm going to, of course, select the Line tool from here, and I'm going to connect the bottom of the peaks to each other, right? Like this. I just need to make sure that the lines intersect with the actual peaks. Then I'm going to select the wand tool and select each peak individually. What I can also do then 
is basically go to gels and label picks. So this will give me a percentage, a big percentage of, uh, of the total surface area basically. And this, we, these will be my results. Of course, uh, what I can do right now is just copy it into an Excel or something similar and I can analyze this, uh, this data right here. Uh, just let me show you how you can do that. Okay, so I have uh, numbers, I don't have Excel, but what can you do? What I can do is basically paste these values right here. Let me arrange them a bit and of course name it, name them. So this would be the control, this would be S1, this one duplicate, S2, S2, S3, S3. Uh, what I can do next is um, get the averages from them. I don't have a <clears throat> um, duplicate for the control, but yeah just so you know what I'm talking about. It's average, and this and this. Next one is average from S2. This one would be average from S3. What I would uh, basically do next is normalize the data to the control. Let's see it right here. And in order to normalize this, I'm just going to go to equals the control divided by the control, of course. And let's put this into percentages right here. This will equal the average from S1 divided by this and of course I'm going to select percentage in the same manner. So what I can do next is, yeah, why not? Let's um, let's do also a graph. This is the control. This is one. generate a chart or something similar and yeah of course so you basically um, get the idea from here okay and of course you can use this data to, to do all kinds of things and uh, of course you could do this to basically measure the um, the gene expression of a particular gene. What you would need to do is basically for every sample uh, have a housekeeping gene to normalize to, just to avoid experimental inconsistencies because as you can see right here, this was the same sample, S1, but because, uh, because of, I don't know, pipetting error or something similar, this was, uh, this was very inconsistent. So yeah, hopefully this video has been useful. Please, uh, you know, leave a comment if you have something to add. And just remember, this is uh, how I do um, the, the, this, this process. This is by no means the best, uh, the best way to do it. And uh, of course, if you have any suggestion of, or corrections, uh, I am eagerly waiting for you to post them into the comments below. So yeah, subscribe and like this video if you uh, found it useful in any way.